have a very reliable cut points that we can really uh, classify these lesions. So P3 positivity versus negativity, when you look at it, number of cases with low grade versus high grade, there is a significant difference, but there is no cutoff uh, point to uh, use that as a, a clinical test. The other very important uh, aspect of DCIS is the margin status. In terms of successful uh, treatment, it is a very important and uh, many of the segmental resection patients uh, receive radiation therapy and the radiation oncologists always require negative margin. And the definition uh, of positive margin, as we briefly discussed this morning, is the presence of DCIS at the margin transected. And in terms of negative margin, it has not been well established. So we would like to see some uh, tissue uh, between DCIS and the ink surface uh, of the tissue, but is it a uh, one millimeter, two millimeters, couple millimeters, it's really uh, is not uh, well established. In MD Anderson, majority of the surgeons would like to have more than a few millimeters, more than two millimeters, three millimeters, and again, based on the patient's um, uh, presentation, like how the lesion is close to the uh, nipple, uh, or what size the breast is, and this sort of thing, even a few millimeter margin, meaning that one millimeter margin uh, is acceptable by uh, surgeons. And especially with the new approach to invasive carcinoma and margin, the definition of invasive carcinoma margins is you know, no tumor, uh, um, uh, tumor. Uh, many of the surgeons started to apply that to DCIS, really without having uh, data uh, on that. Very important concept on DCIS, which is not uh, that uh, frequent for invasive carcinoma, is the uh, lesions uh, having uh, skipped areas in the duct system. In this diagram, um, uh, I show this as a nipple, and the, the uh, breast ducts diverge from the nipple. And in this area, uh, in this ductal system, there is DCIS. So this we would call is a contiguous pattern. So this DCIS uh, started somewhere, and then it is progressing along this duct. Many of the breast uh, ducts do not uh, cross uh, each other. And uh, when we look at histologic sections, and if we do the mapping, we can really reconstruct uh, this uh, ductal system. So in this case, uh, if you have a, a, a margin uh, from here, most likely you do not have anything left. Uh, so if you have a margin like this, this would be a positive margin, but if this margin were extended up over here, it would be a negative uh, margin. But sometimes you can have these skip lesions. In this, I indicated the yellow area is the normal, and then the red is involving the uh, DCIS. So if you have an excision like this, since you do not have DCIS at the margin, you have a significant amount of leftover DCIS, but your margin is negative. So this would be a patient who have a negative excisional margin, but then the patient have residual DCIS. So how do we deal with these cases uh, in uh, clinical practice? And we use some surrogate markers to predict which patient is going to have residual DCIS in the uh, uh, margin and the, residual, the rest of the breast. And if you look at the one millimeter, less than one millimeter clearance, 50% of the DCIS cases will have residual DCIS, even though there is no ink right on the margin. And usually the skipped uh, uh, areas is more frequent with low-grade lesions than high-grade lesions. It is kind of counter, um, uh, uh, it is uh, against uh, like our uh, thinking, uh, the high-grade lesions need more margin, 
actually low grade DCIS lesion, if our uh, uh, goal is to get negative margin, low grade lesions have more uh, um, skip lesions than high grade uh, lesions. And if we look at the outcomes of uh, DCIS, if you have a mastectomy, obviously it's the treatment, uh, definitive uh, treatment, and these patients, uh, very few uh, patients uh, developed uh, recurrence uh, when you follow them up, up to 20%. And majority of these, because of the residual breast uh, parenchyma, even when you do uh, full uh, total mastectomy, Especially now, use of skin sparing mastectomy, we have a lot more parenchyma left, and even with total mastectomy, few patients will uh, develop uh, 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 recurrence. So, when you have a, a wide local excision uh, alone, uh, the uh, uh, recurrence uh, rate usually uh, any type of both invasive uh, and in situ carcinoma is around uh, 3.9 compared to invasive recurrence alone is 1.7. So what is the main uh, goal of uh, treatment of DCIS? If the main goal is prevention of any type of local recurrence, uh, especially if the main consideration is the invasive uh, recurrence, then uh, we really need to try to get more uh, clean uh, margins. But in addition to that, there are additional considerations many of the surgeons are concerned, which is the cosmetic outcomes and the uh, patient's uh, uh, preference. That's a very important uh, consideration, and many patients say that they are willing to take some risk uh, in terms of uh, the uh, recurrence rates. So there has been, uh, from uh, breast conserving surgery to uh, performing partial or whole breast radiation to total mastectomy, there are multiple uh, choices uh, for uh, treatment. And many of these molecular studies have been used to predict if any of the patient is going to be more eligible uh, for one or the other. Many people have uh, been using uh, this uh, thing is that are we over treating DCIS? So we're doing less surgery for invasive carcinoma, but we are doing more surgery uh, for DCIS. Is that really true uh, or not? It's very controversial uh, right now. And uh, in order to uh, classify patients, different grading systems have been used. For example, when NICE prognostic index looks at the patient's 10-year disease-free survival rate based on the size uh, of the uh, DCIS, uh, margin width, and the grade of the DCIS, and as I indicated before, age of the patient is also a very important consideration. So patients who have big lesions, older, uh, younger patients, big lesions, uh, small margins, they have a very high chance of local recurrence. In contrast, to uh, older patients, low brain tumors, and uh, widely excised uh, tumors. And uh, there are uh, multiple uh, factors looking at the biology of uh, DCIS and uh, looking at different uh, parameters. And one of the things uh, that we know that uh, endocrine therapy after diagnosis of DCIS is very effective, both uh, decreasing uh, ipsilateral and contralateral breast carcinoma events. And in this reduction, uh, it is important to realize that estrogen receptor status of the DCIS is uh, very important. Patients who receive uh, uh, hormonal therapy after diagnosis of DCIS, the patients uh, uh, respond uh, is the patients who have estrogen receptor uh, DCIS. So the reduction rate is like 50% only for those patients who have ER positive uh, tumor. So that's the reason when we make a diagnosis of DCIS, we have to perform um, uh, uh, estrogen uh, receptor. So there are many clinical, ongoing clinical trials in the United States looking at uh, giving an, uh, estrogen receptor positivity and giving hormonal therapy prior to uh, surgery 
to see if we can actually prevent progression to uh, invasive carcinoma. So I'm going to very briefly mention these uh, studies because these are our own uh, going studies and they all show that giving preoperatively uh, the DCIS, we can really reduce the proliferation and uh, increase the immunogenic uh, effect uh, of the uh, uh, treatment. So this is a new concept to give estrogen receptor um, uh, positive DCIS uh, new adjuvant hormonal uh, therapy and we need to wait for the uh, results. Uh, the other important aspect of DCIS is that uh, based on the grade of DCIS, her uh, to new expression uh, can be uh, up to uh, 50 to 60 percent high grade uh, DCIS. And many people have looked at giving Herceptin uh, as a blockage uh, of uh, progression from in situ carcinoma to invasive carcinoma. Again, this is a new concept to give neoadjuvant chemotherapy, uh, neoadjuvant uh, Herceptin therapy to DCIS uh, patients uh, to see if uh, we can uh, block the uh, progression to invasive carcinoma. For this, another trial is uh, ongoing in the uh, United uh, States. And uh, the other use uh, of um, uh, Herceptin uh, trials in uh, the uh, DCIS is that Herceptin is given as a radio sensitizer to uh, DCIS. So if your uh, surgeons or medical oncologists would ask you to uh, her to new uh, on DCIS, uh, you really have to ask the question, is the patient is on clinical trial? Because at this point, out of clinical trial, we do not perform this, but there are ongoing clinical trials, and some of these clinical trials are international uh, trials, uh, that your uh, surgeons or medical oncologists are participating in it, then yes, we do uh, continue evaluation on the DCIS. So in terms of uh, recommendations of uh, the risk stratification models of uh, patients with DCIS, there are some studies looking at active surveillance alone, local excision alone, local excision with radiation therapy and mastectomy. Yes, we can use biomarkers to predict uh, which patient is going to uh, predict, but right now in clinical practice, none of these biomarkers is 100%. And still, the size of DCIS, margin status, grade are the main uh, factors that we base on our uh, diagnosis. Thank you very much for your attention.